Franchising is a fundamental cornerstone of Australia's economy. And with one new franchise business opening every eight minutes, every business day, Australia is the most franchise country per capita in the world. I'm Effie Zahos and welcome to The Franchise Show. Franchising, it's not a business, it's a way of doing business. A sector worth around $171 billion in Australia. Now with around 86% of all franchise systems originating from Australia, industry experts say our franchise future couldn't be brighter. Australia is the most densely uh, populated franchise country in the world. We take franchising on more than the Yanks do, believe it or not. Uh, every Australian, part of their dream is that they want to own a business, and the best way to do that is through franchising. It's not a set-and-forget system. You can't buy a franchise and, and um, ex you know, put a manager in it and walk away. You actually have to be involved in the day-to-day -day running of the store. The risks in franchising are, are reversed compared to an independent small business by and large. So I think franchising will continue to grow and it'll get into different business sectors. I think uh, when you first start out, maybe there's some unrealistic expectations about it. it might be easier or a lifestyle choice. But the reality about it is in a franchise model, it's a lot of hard work. If you've never been in business before, franchising is probably the safest way to go. Uh, people who are fairly naive, business operators need some help coming into a business where you don't have to relearn the mistakes that, uh, that someone else has made. So that's, that's what franchising is all about. For anybody looking to buy a franchise, it would be find something that they like to do. So if you're going to be a franchisee for the next five or ten years, choose something that you can really see yourself doing and enjoying. A national franchise brand, if you can walk in there with confidence from day one and people are going to know who you are, what you stand for, and it'll actually just give you that little bit of an edge when it comes to building your business. Buying a franchise really takes that risk out of it because there's a proven product that's already successful with consumers and the business model and the marketing strategy have already got a great track record out there in the market. Hi, I'm Pam, myself and my husband are the franchisees for both Brumby's Calabar and Brumby's Partridge. Back in 1985, my husband and I were looking to purchase a business, so we threw three kids, a dog and 96 boxes into a car and drove to Queensland and opened the first Brumbies in Beanley in 1985. There's so many skills that you have to learn. You have to be organised. And the biggest learning curve for me there was when we became a multi-site. So we have routines. I have opening routines, closing routines, daily routines, cleaning routines. You name it, there's a routine for it. So we have to be proactive in that we have to be organised. Then we have to be reactive and be able to react to the day down to the degree that we actually do hourly targets. So we do yearly, monthly, weekly hourly targets just to keep us on track as to how we're going. And every one of our employees has a total different thought process, a total different list of importance, as do our customers. And if we want our customers to be treated properly, we treat our team as our customers. We sell bread, and we're in the bread business, but in reality, I feel we're in the people business. We've had some bloody good years, and we've had some tough years, and they're tough for different reasons. Sometimes we just don't have the team that we want. Sometimes it's just not happening for whatever reason. So the biggest challenge, I guess, is recognising the challenge and then putting in place the things we need to meet those challenges. I'd definitely go and talk to other franchisees. If everyone's glowingly and fantastic, I'd be sceptical. If everyone's hating it, I'd be sceptical. Do your research. You are buying a job sometimes. The ultimate game, I think, has to be buying a lifestyle. But at the end of the day, you're the one responsible. At the end of the day, you're the one who's responsible for not only your life and your children's life with the people who work for you, but also to have lots of fun. Coming up next, do you work with family or friends? We hear from industry experts who have interesting advice on mixing business with pleasure. You're watching The Franchise Show. Do you work with those who you hold nearest or dearest? Well, the reality is many of the world's biggest companies encourage working relationships between family or friends. 
Now, Jasmine looked into how effectively you can mix and manage family affairs and ensure peace and profit are all part of a day's work. Could you work with your family? Well, Effie, actually, yes, I can. My husband is a cameraman and we work together a fair bit, which seems to be a good fit for us. But as for that quirky business buzzword, family, is it as common or desirable as some of us think? And is it possible to maintain a personal and professional relationship? We'll find out. Would you work with a family member or a friend? Uh, no, I don't think it's a good idea. Uh, probably friend before family, because otherwise, you're like, our own family probably think we're dictating to them. So do you guys work together? No. no. <laughs> Very often when we think about going into business, it's our family and friends who we've spoken about it with at the very beginning. They're the people that are likely to give us honest feedback or pretty honest feedback. And they're also people who are likely to share the same sorts of passions and interests that we have. With family businesses accounting for around 70% of all business in Australia, life care psychologist and consultant Susan DeCampo says working with family and friends is not a new concept. Family businesses have been going for decades and decades. If you were raised on a farm, it was expected that you would work on the family farm. If your father was a baker, then you, of course, would work in the bakery. Having a small business is like giving birth to a baby. It's a 24-7 responsibility that that is going to take up all of your time. Your best to you, business advisor and author Bruce Sullivan is no stranger to working relationships. People are way too weird and complicated. They've got all their histories and you add the family business dilemma to that and there's another level of complexity. How are we going to agree to deal with conflict fairly so that we can get to resolution and not resentment? It makes a big difference. You will always need an accountant, a lawyer, a business advisor in business, and sadly, most people use them at the end when things go bad. Money's not everything, but it's up there with oxygen. <laughs> you need a certain amount of it every single day to survive, and that's in business and in life. So I think coming back to the agreements, spending more time at the beginning with your accountants, with your advisors, with your lawyers, being really clear about what's going to happen with money. Could you foresee some tree barneys between your family members if, you, if they were working for you? Uh, not my family, but maybe her family. <laughs> if there's anything that needs to be addressed, it may not be uh, suitable in the workplace. It might cause problems, you know, with your friendship. Too comfortable to say something you're not entitled to or maybe not comfortable for risking the friendship. It's a good thing my dad's fairly relaxed, so at the end of the day, we can kind of take our work hats off and, and really come together and, and be the family, which is good. Even if something's bugged you earlier in the day? Uh, no, I'll probably hold on to it, yeah. Psychologist Susan says when tensions arise, one key tool is to develop a strategy and build skills to ensure home issues remain at home and work problems stay at work. I think agree to disagree and put things on hold. If it's a really important issue that needs to be discussed, I think it's important to kind of declare a bit of time out and know that you'll be able to return to it at a time and place where it's appropriate. Just because you're compatible as a friend or within a family context, it does not automatically translate that you're going to be compatible in a business relationship. What do you think could go wrong by uh, working with a family member? We got nothing uh, tonight. Uh, my, we always know my mum. She won't be able to cook because she's angry towards me. <laughs> Punishment. <laughs> Um, when you start a small business or a new business, um, often it's easier to get your family and friends involved because it's perceived as being cost effective. Always look at any type of engagement with an employee as a business transaction. And so what that means is everyone should be very clear about their accountability, responsibility and authority. What we'd recommend is if you own a business and you're going to have your own children work within it, that you make sure that you look state by state of what the minimum age is for an employee within a family owned business. The best way to engage with an employee is with a written employment agreement. And that agreement is simply a document which shows what the offer is, so the offer of employment, whether it's been accepted and what consideration is for how much they're going to be paid. For the latest franchise news and industry information, make sure you visit our website, thefranchiseshow.com.au. With around 70% of all businesses in Australia made up by family businesses, working with family and friends is a favourable model in our franchise systems. 
After the break, we meet another franchise where Dad and Daughter Day has taken on a whole new meaning. Peaks, troughs and plateaus are all part of business. And who better to share the tough times and the good times than with your flesh and blood? Well, that's what these franchise families suggest. George has been working in the store now for around two years. Uh, we've had the store for seven years, uh, but as the kids have got a bit older, they've come into the business. I've been working here for two years now. I started on the sink washing up, then I was on the front counter doing customer service, and now I'm on the cup bench cutting pizzas. And this one is a New Mexico, but with feta cheese instead of normal cheese. <laughs> Yeah, I love working with my family because I get to spend more time with my dad and he makes it really fun to come to work and we spend a lot of time together now. Uh, we'll have that ready for you in around 10 minutes at the Ridge Shopping Centre. OK then, thank you. Oh, I love having George here. The expectations are a little bit higher for her from what we'd expect from all of our other staff. She does an excellent job. She has a vested interest in the business, which is good. We've never had any problems, any blow-ups or issues with you know, discipline or anything like that at work. But we just roster her on for um, what shifts she can manage. And then if she wants more work, she comes and sees me and um, we go from there, so. The advantages of working with my dad is that I get more flexibility with my hours. So when I have a lot of schoolwork on or exam blocks coming up, I get to have some time off to study and he understands that I might need some time off. I usually work only once a week but it's really handy for my dad because whenever he's short on staff or he really needs extra help, he can just call me in and I'm always available to come in and help out. Yeah, tomorrow night she's rostered on. Uh, I've got a call up. It's pretty hard to say no when Dad's asking. Uh, the advantages are uh, I get to spend uh, a lot more time with my daughter. She's earning money as well as a bit of bonding time. We head out after work and uh, we'll get an ice cream after we finish the shift. Disadvantages, if I'm too hard on her at work, she tells her mum. Uh, which makes it pretty uncomfortable there for everyone. <laughs> but there's not too many disadvantages at this stage. Yeah, I'd highly recommend it. The window with the kids being an age where they're starting their first job and leaving home is, is fairly short. So I guess we get to take advantage of when they're working and, you know, that time. So it won't be long when they head off to university and, and leave home. So uh, we make the most of it. Well, we've got a year left, so. I reckon she's starting to travel the world after in a year's time. Don't know how. <laughs> she might not get far. She to start working a bit harder. Hi, I'm Shane Doyle, and I've been a franchisee here with Jim's Antennas for the past five years. I bought a Jim's Antennas franchise for a few different reasons. I was actually an existing technician out on the road doing the same sort of installations, but I found I was looking for a bit more support. The changes in the industry and technology was something that was hard to keep abreast on my own, so I found looking for a franchise was something that's going to keep me up to date and, uh, and give me that extra training and support that I needed. Every day is different, which is what I really love. So today we could be up on the roof putting in an antenna system. The next day we could be doing a security system, completely different technology and different installation. And from there we could go and do a home theatre. So it's just so variant and enjoyable. Starting as a new franchisee, your day-to-day -day stuff will be our audio-visual installs, but as you grow and you train and get further aspects, you can engage your skills, you can have more employees on board, build your business up, and even look at things like being a regional franchisor to grow your own business in the future. Typical customers are very variant, so our residential customers, our Mr and Mrs Jones, they'll give us a call for things like TV reception issues, wall manning their TVs, setting up their home theatre systems, but then we also have commercial clients who might be doing a multi-apartment uh, building as such where we do distribution of the TV and antenna system there. Our franchisor and the head office are fantastic. They do all the advertising for us, so they get that out to the market and they cover all that aspect. So the lead will come through to me and our, on our phone and our iPad system and then we book the customer and schedule in for a time that suits the customer and the time that suits us as the technician. Within the Jim's group network, there's 3,500 franchisees. Uh, with the antennas division, we've got just over 150 franchisees. Passion's probably one of the most important things. So if you're buying a franchise, it's not a job, it's, it's gonna become part of your life. And 
the passion part of it is really important. We can teach anybody the skills, but they've got to want to do it and they've got to enjoy going out and working with AV, putting up TV screens and antennas and getting out on, out on the road on the day and they've got to enjoy it. They've got a passion for that and passion for customer service, we can teach them the skills. Yeah, the franchise or I sort of was expecting um, a, a few different things. Um, business advice, um, ways to structure my business and help me build it, but also just ongoing coaching. Um, you know, when I'm confident or, or looking for different aspects of the business um, and even look, keeping me up to date with what the industry trends are and what we're doing in our industry as well. The training was really extensive, it was great. We started off with a induction at the Jim's Group head office, which was fantastic. Um, that gave us a really good broad overview of, of the whole gym system. And then our regional franchisor took us into some internal training where we did some business uh, support stuff and a bit of the software. And then we had four full weeks out on the road and we did all the technical training all on site. It was in customers' houses and it was real. Before buying the franchise, I did quite a bit of research, not only on the contracts and stuff, but I got a bit of advice from my accountant and and solicitors and got them to look through the whole structure. We also sat with the franchisor and we went through some cash flow forecasts and, uh, and some business planning as well. So I knew all the costs and exactly what I was getting into. Such a great family, the Jim's Antennas group, where uh, you get really good close mates with the guys, all the other technicians, they'll come and help you on another job. And you know, the guys, similar interests and, uh, and you become a really good family. But it's not only that, the guys in the office are fantastic. You know, we have our social functions during the year, um, our national conferences. So well, it is, it's just a big family and it's great to see them all. I was really confident in the business model and the structure we had and it gave me the opportunity then to, to purchase in and now I've become a, a regional franchisor for, for one of our regions. So the biggest tip I'd give to anyone that is buying a franchise is to, to listen to the franchisor. They're there for a reason. They've got the model and the tips and everything to make a successful business. So really take on board what they've got and implement it. Next we chat with a large franchise who connects with their community through pizza. Stay watching, this is The Franchise Show. Welcome back to The Franchise Show. I'm Effie Zahos. Small business is big business in Australia and fortunately, many of these franchise cultures share their success and align with charities and local community groups. Pizza Capers is a proud partner of the Arty Academy and through ongoing community connection and some slices of pizza, are looking to help bridge the gap in educational outcomes for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander students. Hi, I'm Jess and I'm the Program Manager for the Arty Academy. The Arty Academy stands for Achieving Results Through Indigenous Education. It's funded by the Australian Government and we are an incentive-based program and we work with Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander students in state high schools right across Queensland. We have 10 state high schools in South East Queensland and two in Central Queensland. And we work on school attendance, learning and engagement through our tutoring program as well as retention through to Year 12. One of our programs is the Arty Academy Tutoring Program and today we've got some students out from the University of Queensland to assist our students in numeracy and literacy skills. Pizza Capers is a really great partner for the Arty Academy because it allows us to give incentives to the students to really strive for success in their education. So they get to have a pizza lunch or they can get a Pizza Capers voucher if they're progressing along in class time. Over the last 12 months, we have uh, delivered our pizzas at nine RT events uh, across Queensland. We've seen firsthand um, how supporting such a, a great cause can add value to the lives of Indigenous children and Torres Strait Islanders. When we attend the events, um, people are always pleased to see us there and it's nice to bring some joy and happiness into the educational day of these students. Pizza Capers came along today to deliver some yummy pizzas for us to reward the students that have been doing really well in their tutoring sessions for the last six weeks. We hold launches at the beginning of every semester and we launch to the students an attendance challenge. So they have a benchmark of about 90% physical attendance that they need to reach by the end of the semester. And if they reach that, then they get a reward. Then also throughout the semesters, we have yarn outs and tutoring sessions. So at our yarn outs, we do uh, cultural events. So we can do some traditional games, some dances um, or an art activity. And then for our tutoring sessions, tutors come out to the schools and they're either in class or they work one-on-one -on -one with the kids outside of the classroom. Buying into a franchise can be the start of a successful family business. 
But if you're coming on board as a friend, spouse or relative, you've got to know the risks involved. When it comes to finance, think twice about offering your home as security for a business loan. Yes, it can mean access to cheaper finance, but it's a high stakes decision. If the business fails or doesn't perform as well as expected, you could lose the roof over your head. Putting your signature to the paperwork could see you agreeing to be a company director or a co-borrower for a business loan, and both could see you become a victim of sexually transmitted debt. Now, that's when you become responsible for the debts of your other half's business if the venture or your relationship goes pear-shaped. Be careful if being asked to sign as a guarantor. It's a big deal. Being a guarantor means agreeing to take on responsibility for a loan if the borrower cannot or chooses not to make the repayments. Now, if that happens, the results can be life-changing and not in a good way because the bank will turn to you to make the loan good. Well, that wraps up our very first episode of The Franchise Show. Join us next week as we continue to explore the positives, the pitfalls and the personalities behind small business in Australia on The Franchise Show. I'm Effie Zahos and have a great weekend. <laughs>